Hey there, Alex here. And today I decided to start a basic data engineering playlist where I'm gonna try to cover some basic data engineering concepts in less than five minutes on a video. And today I decided to start with covering streaming versus batch pipelines. So understanding what are the difference between a streaming architecture and a batch architecture for a data pipeline. If you're interested in understanding what's a streaming pipeline and how it differs from a batch pipeline and what a batch pipeline is, I encourage you to keep watching. So let's get started. So in the data engineering contest, whenever we talk about streaming pipeline, we're talking about currently processing data on a continuous basis. So it means processing, for example, like bank transaction on a continuous basis so we can keep updating what the balance is on our bank account. At the same time, uh, batch pipelines means periodically process data. So instead of continuously process data, it means that after a select period of time, so after an hour, a day, a week, a month, or a year, we're going to do some processing to a specific data set. Or if we reach a certain number of gigabytes or we receive a certain number of messages, or we have a specific amount of data that we need to process that we can go ahead and process a specific quantity. So these are the main differences that we needed to understand from a core conceptual point. Streaming pipelines ingest data on a continuous basis. And on the other hand, batch pipelines ingest data on a more scheduled basis. So now that we understand what are the core differences between a streaming and a batch pipeline, I'll give you some examples so you can more understand concretely exactly what I mean. So an example of a streaming pipeline can be a bunch of IoT devices sending their data like a thermostat, and different sensors to a main computer so they can calculate and do some data processing real time to optimize what the temperature is in a room. Another example of a streaming data pipeline can be updating the inventory of a store. So every time a customer checks out, it's going to update exactly the inventory of that store, the item, the count, and everything in between. And that needs to be real time so uh, the people that work at the store exactly know what the inventory is at that store. So now let's look at some example of some batch processing pipelines. So if you example, I have a bank account, you might have had to deal with monthly reports. So this is an example of a batch pipeline. So this batch pipeline is gonna take all of your transaction for the current month and then it's gonna make a resume and make a nice report for you. So that, this is an example of a recurrently monthly batch data pipeline. Another example of a batch pipeline is, if you're familiar with Spotify, is my year in review. Here, Spotify will present you what are the most uh, genre that you've listened to, what is the most popular artist that you've listened to for the year. This is an example of a batch pipeline, where Spotify probably has taken all of your music history for the year and processed all of the data and generated some statistics that presented to you nicely at the end of the year. So this is an example of a batch pipeline. Now that we have some example of batch and streaming pipeline, let's look at some tools that we can use to build these architectures. So if you want to use a big data processing framework to build a batch processing, I encourage you to look into Hadoop. It's used to do big data processing at scale. If you're interested in building streaming pipeline, you can look at the Apache Kafka ecosystem. This is a popular ecosystem that's used for building streaming pipeline. At the same time, there's also Apache Flink, and uh, you can use, for example, cloud tools like PopSub in uh, Google, and uh, Amazon has their, Emma, their managed Amazon Kafka as well, but you can also use their SNS and SQS publisher consumer messaging system for doing real-time streaming ingestion data. So finally, uh, we have a good understanding of what we can use a streaming pipeline for and what we can use a batch pipeline for. The streaming pipeline is good for transactions that we need to have real-time data and also they need to be fault tolerant. On the other hand, if we want to do batch processing, this is usually the something that we need to wait for this data to be available to us. And usually this processing can be done more efficient since we ingest and read data at once and we're able to combine processes and make all this querying more efficient rather than just processing one data at a time 
that we're doing on the streaming side. So each one has its pros and cons and each solution is better suited for a specific use case. So I hope you have a better understanding of what a streaming and a batch pipeline is. If you have any other concepts that you'd like me to describe in under five minutes, please let me know down in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content like this, subscribe to my channel. Until next week, see you then. Bye.